Hello students, welcome back to MK Institution. Today in this video, uh, we'll study about the sexual reproduction in plants. Clear? Sexual reproduction in plants. In plants here, uh, selected leaf, the very best good example and that what we can study briefly, uh, that is Datura flower, okay, hibiscus flower, okay. These flowers are the bisexual flowers because this flower consists of uh, both the uh, male parts and female parts. I mean, uh, androsium and gametium, both, you know, clear. So, and in complete plants here, flower is the attractive part in the plant, okay, for pollination process, clear. So, we'll study deeply about the Datura flower. Structure of the thura flower, then formation of game male gametes, female gametes, and fertilization process. This uh, topic is for the tenth class as well as the second year. Okay, by PC group. <coughs> so first we'll study about the thura flower. Structure of the thura flower. Clear. Why we are taking the example of Dutra flower here now? Because it is a bisexual flower. Clear. It consists of both the gametes, male gametes and female gametes. So in structure of Dutra flower, uh, we will study the first, the first most thing we have to study about the pedicel. Then second is the thalamus. These are the parts. These are the important parts of the Dutra flower. Clear. Then uh, thalamus, then callus. Then fourth is the corolla. All right. These are the very important parts. Okay. Very, very important parts. Okay. Pedicel, thalamus, callus, corolla. Okay. These are the very, very important part here. Beside this, okay, uh, other two important parts. Uh, one is called androsium. Androsium. Androsium and the last few sixth was the gynosium. Gynosium, clear. These are the very important parts of the flower. Here. Okay, so what is pedicel? What is thalamus? What is callus? What is corolla? What is androsium? What is gynosium? If we explain this complete six parts here, you know, that means you are explaining the structure of the flower will be completed. Clear. So the flower will be uh, like this. This structure is called the wall structure. Okay, the word. This is the wall structure here, no? And clear. This one, the first part is called as the Corolla, Corolla, and uh, this one is called callus. And here, one swollen part will be there here, a small swollen part here, and this swollen part is called as the thalamus. Thalamus, and this stalk, clear, otherwise said to be as a pedicel, pedicel. These are the visible parts, okay? Corolla, callus, thalamus, and pedicel. Clear. Now, corolla, callus, thalamus, everything, all the parts are stagnant, okay? They'll be here. They comes and stop in on the thalamus part. A soft a part will be there here, which is called as the thalamus, okay? Which leads to the stalk here, no? Clear. Now, corolla, inside this part here, two other parts are there. Uh, they are called as accessory parts of a flower. So what are the accessory parts of a flower? One is uh, female gamete. This is a female gamete here. And this one is called stigma. This is called stigma. This is called style. Style or pistil. 
question okay and this one is called ovary this is called ovary inside the ovary ovule is present here here the ovule is present okay this is the ovule clear and this part already i told you this otherwise called as the thalamus this thalamus clear now the male part this is the female part this together of all the female parts is called as gynoecium what does it call as here now gynoecium gynoecium clear this all female parts is called as the gynoecium here clear what are the parts here now stigma uh, style or the pistil ovary okay ovule and thalamus clear now the male parts okay the male parts are there. This is the male part this is called as anther this part is called as the anther and this one is called as the filament filament okay together said to be as a stamen some here broad section will be there said to be as a stamen you can call as a stamen also clear yeah. so together of this all the parts is called as the androsium okay what this is called as here androsium androsium clear so androsium and the gynosium together are called as accessory parts of a flower clear androsium and gynosium together are called as the accessory parts of a flower you know clear so what are the parts in the short question two more answer what is androsium and what is gynosium then you have to write this whole parts androsium nothing but it's a male part consists of anther filament stamen then what are the female parts called together called as here gynosium and it is called as stigma what are present in the female parts here stigma style or pistil ovary ovule and thalamus this style is made up of a uh, a large number of cells are present in, inside it and that cells are called as the carpels <coughs> what the cells are called as here no carpels they are called as carpels they are made up of carpels here clear this is the structure of uh, dathra flower clear and dathra flower is a very poisonous flower okay the thra seeds if you consume them it's a very very highly poison here okay it affect directly the nervous system okay the seeds or the flower of a flower if you consume that one here it directly affect on the nervous system very bad effect on the nervous system so this is a structure of the thra flower clear what are the visible parts of the thra flower corolla callus thalamus pedicel inside that what is present androsium and gynoecium what is androsium male parts anther filament and stamen and what are the gynoecium means here stigma style ovary ovule thalamus and pedicel clear this is the structure of the drop so this accessory parts androsium and gynoecium both are enclosed by corolla clear both are enclosed by the corolla okay which leads to this callus the callus is nothing but a green uh, tube like structure green tube like structure here will leads to pedicel clear this is the structure of the drop now i'll show you the formation of male gametes formation of male gametes in the thra flower formation of male gametes in the thra flower so what is the male gametes in the thra flower called as male gametes okay male gametes of the drop flower called as pollen grains pollen grains clear the male gamete in the drop flower of the drop flower is called as in pollen grains clear now formation of male gametes okay how how to show that how, how the pollen grains are formed that we have to explain here okay formation of pollen grain so how it will form you know the first one okay here i'll show the flow chart to you okay flow chart if you perfect in flow chart you can write the answer briefly okay easily you can frame the answer if you know the flow chart clear so where you can find this pollen grains how it develop that i'll show you uh, by means of a flow chart if you perfect in flow chart here you can write the answer complete answer you can write it clear so production of pollen grains can be seen in anther 
can be seen in anther. Production of pollen grains can be seen in anther. Anther consists of two lobes. Okay, anther consists of two lobes. Lobes means what? Chambers. Two lobes. Two lobes. Okay. Anther consists of two lobes. And each lobe consists of each lobe consists of pollen chambers. Each lobe consists of pollen chamber. Total how many? Four pollen chambers are present. PC means here pollen chamber. Okay, clear? Anther. Okay, production of pollen grains can be seen in anther. Anther consists of two lobes. Okay, each lobe consists of two to pollen chambers. Clear? And this pollen chambers consist of this pollen chambers consist of or contain a large number of spores, spores formation tissues, spores formation tissues, clear, spores formation tissues, SFT means spores formation tissues, okay, this, now this spores formation tissues consist of, they also contain a large number of cells, a large number of cells many cells many many cells okay don't count one two three four cells here many cells as many as cells are present in it here yeah? and there consists of two lobes lobes means compartments lobes means here yeah? compartments here yeah? and this lobe consists of two two pollen chambers okay two two pollen chambers here two and here two this lobe consists of two pollen chamber this lobe consists of two pollen chamber each pollen chamber consists of spores formation tissues spores formation tissue this spores formation tissue consists of a large number of cells many cells are present in it so out of many cells few cells don't tell four cells here okay many cells are present in it out of many cells few cells very few cells okay few cells converts into pollen mother cell pmc pollen mother cell what is pmc means here pollen mother cell and this pollen mother cell is diploid in condition that means two set of chromosomes are present in pollen mother cell clear have you understood up to here now okay and that consists of two lobes each lobe consists of two to pollen chambers all the pollen chamber consists of a large number of spores formation tissues okay and these spores formation tissues contain a large number of cells out of many cells few cells converts into pollen mother cell suppose 100 cells are there out of 100 cells, 20 to 25 cells converts into pollen mother cell. Clear? This pollen mother cell, once again I am writing here, this pollen mother cell undergo, this is a two set of chromosomes are present in it. Clear? This pollen mother cell undergoes a process called as meiosis. What is the process called as here now? Meiosis. Okay. It undergoes the process called as meiosis. Meiosis and produce. Okay. What does it produce, you know? It produce four daughter cells what it produce you know four daughter cells clear pmc that is pollen mother cell undergoes the process meiosis and produce four daughter cells four daughter cells dc means daughter cell okay daughter cells clear so this all the daughter cells are haploid in condition means one set of chromosomes are present in it just one set of chromosomes clear so in future, all these four daughter cell converts, okay, it also converts, okay, converts into pollen mother cell, okay, sorry, pollen grains, converts into pollen grain, clear, converts into pollen grain, clear, this is the history of the pollen grains, like this the pollen grains are formed inside the anther, clear, once again I will tell you, anther consists of two loops, each lobe consists of two to pollen chambers. Each pollen chamber consists of large number of spores formation tissues. Spores formation tissues. Spores formation tissues contain a large number of cells. Out of many cells, few cells converts into pollen mother cell, which is deployed in condition. Clear. So this pollen mother cell undergoes the process called as meiosis. When it undergoes the process called meiosis, it produces four daughter cells. Clear four daughter. These four daughter cells are haploid in condition. Okay. In future, all the four daughter cells converts into pollen grains. And even pollen grains also consist of only one set of chromosomes. Clear pollen grains are formed like this. 
So this pollen grain, uh, this pollen grain otherwise called as male gamete. What is pollen grain called as here? Male gamete. Male gamete or male gametophyte. Gametophyte. Clear? And the study and the study and formation of pollen grains. The study and formation of pollen grains is called as palynology. Palynology. Clear? Hope everybody have understood. Easy topic, okay? It is for the 10th as well as in the second year also. This topic is there here. Clear? Shall I explain once more? Listen carefully once more, okay? And the consists of two lobes. Each lobe, okay, I'll show by the diagram. With the diagram, you can understand still clearly, okay? Anther consists of two lobes. Imagine uh, this is the anther. Okay, this is the anther. Clear? This is the anther. Anther consists of two lobes. So, anther consists of uh, two lobes. Clear? First one, second one, two lobes. Each lobe consists of two, two pollen chambers. So, each lobe, each compartment consists of two pollen chambers, one and two, one and two two pollen chambers right pollen chamber consists of spores formation tissues many are there spores formation tissues so you can draw as many as here you know. these are the spores formation tissues these are all the spores formation tissues many are there not through two three many are there okay to check properly i'm doing like this okay this spores formation tissue contain large number of cells inside is a large number of cells are present here you know. a large number of cells are present in it where in spores formation tissues okay they are present clear hope everybody understood each and every part here you know. now out of many cells here few cells converts into pollen mother cell which is diploting condition it undergoes the co uh, process called as the meiosis and produces four daughter cells daughter cell is the haploiding condition in future all the four daughter cells converts into pollen grains pollen grains also a haploid cell okay haploid and diploid diploid is two set of chromosomes Haploid means one set of chromosomes here. So this pollen grains is otherwise said to be as a male gamete or male gametophyte. Okay. And the study and formation of pollen grains uh, is called palynology. Clear? Hope everybody have understood here. This flow, flow chart is very important. If you know the flow chart here, you can frame the answer. Uh, nearly 10 to 10, 10 points you can get. Easily you can write the 10 points. Clear? If you know this flow chart. Clear? Next one I will show you. Uh, formation of uh, female gametes. Clear formation of female gametes. So next is the formation of female gametes. Female gamete. So what is female gamete is called? Embryo sac. Embryo sac. Clear. So female gamete is called as the embryo sac. So here also by means of flow chart, I'll show the flow chart. Check properly. Easily you can frame the answer. Clear. So production of embryo sac can be seen in ovary. Okay, can be seen in ovary. So first part is called as the ovary. Clear. Then this ovary is coated with a soft cushion-like structure. Okay, ovary is coated with a soft cushion-like structure, and that structure is called as the placenta. Okay, what does this call as placenta? Clear. And uh, from the ovary, okay, from the from the ovary through placenta, a large number of stacks arises, stick like structures, okay, arises, and they are called as funicles. What are they called as here? You no, know? funicles, okay, funicles. Funicles, okay. So, from the ovary through placenta, a large number of stick like structures arises, they are called as a funicles. And what the funicles are doing here now? Funicles are holding the ovule. Funicles are holding the ovule so that 
the ovule will not move from place to place. It will be strong at one place only. It doesn't move. There's no movement in the ovule here because of the stick like structures. Okay, funicles. Clear. What does the ovule consist of here now? The ovule consists of once again a soft material present in the ovule. And that material is called as a nucellus. Okay, it is called as a nucellus, not nucleus, nucellus. It is not a nucleus, nucellus. So ovule consists of a soft material called as nucellus. And this nucellus contain, okay, this nucellus contain a large number of cells. Many cells are present in nucellus. So from here, the same theory here, out of many cells, many, many cells, thousand, thousand cells are present. So out of many cells, few cells, how many cells here? Few cells, okay, few cells. A few cells converts into, okay, converts into megaspore mother cell, okay, MMC, megaspore mother cell. MMC means megaspore mother cell. This megaspore mother cell is a diploidic condition. Two set of chromosomes present in megaspore mother cell. Clear? That's what P you know. Ovary, ovary is coated with, ovary is coated inside the ovary is coated with a soft cushion like structure and that structure is called as the placenta. And from the ovary through placenta, a large number of sticks arises and that sticks, stalks are called as funicles. What is the work of funicles you know? To hold the ovule, to hold the ovule. And what is present inside the ovule? Once again, soft material is present inside the ovule. And that soft material is called as the nucellus. What does it call as here? Nucellus. Nucellus contain a large number of cells. Many, many cells are present in it. And out of many cells here, no, few cells converts into one megaspore mother cell. Clear? This megaspore mother cell, MMC. Okay. What is MMC means here? No? Megaspore mother cell. MMC. Megaspore mother cell, which is deployed in condition. Then this megaspore mother cell undergoes the process called meiosis undergoes the process called meiosis and then what does it produce you know it also produce four cells okay it undergoes the process called as meiosis and produce four cells what are the four cells called as here megaspore cells what they call as megaspore cell clear all these megaspore cells are haploid in condition what is haploid means here one set of chromosome clear here two set of chromosomes here one set of chromosomes clear so one set in future in future out of these four any one any one converts into embryo sac clear in future out of four megaspore cell one megaspore cell converts into embryo sac embryo sac clear remaining three gives the energy to the cell to convert it clear that is the work of the remaining cell here. But anyhow, this megaspore cell in future converts into one megaspore cell only, converts into embryo sac. What is embryo sac called as here? Female gamete. Embryo sac is called as female gamete or female gametophyte. Okay, gametophyte. Clear. And the study and formation of embryo sac is called as embryology. It's called as embryology. Finish. Okay, if you perfect in the flow chart here, you can write the answer. You can easily frame the answer. Clear? This is the flow chart. Just in one line, in book, in one line, two lines, finish. That much only it will come. But by, by seeing that flow chart, you can frame, frame the 10 points. Totally 10 points you can write. Clear? Clear? Once again, I'll tell you. Okay. Ori coated with, okay, with the diagram I'll show you. You can understand still clearly. Okay. Ori then. This is the ori. This is the ori. Okay. This first part is the ovary. So write it here, ovary. <clears throat> the next one, what we told here, ovary coated with a soft material, a soft cushion-like structure called placenta. So think, this is the soft material. Okay, this is the soft material. Okay, inside the ovary, the soft material, it is coated with the a soft material. See, this is the soft material. Clear? This soft material inside the ovary it is coated with the soft material. What this soft material is called as here placenta. Placenta clear. Then from the ovary, okay, from the ovary through placenta. Same thing I told you from the ovary through placenta. So from the ovary through placenta, a large number of stacks arises. 
stick like structures are arises like this many many they arise here clear a number of stacks are arises like this and what these stacks are called as you know what the name we are given to it here they are called as funicles what are they call as here funicles clear funicles clear what are the work of these funicles you know to hold the ovule to hold the ovule this is the ovule okay to hold the ovule the sticks all sticks are called as the funicles this is the ovule this is ovule clear and what is the ovule consists of you know once again a soft material inside the ovule once again a soft material is present you know clear a soft material is present inside the ovule and what is the soft material called as here it is called as nucellus what does this called as here nucellus clear it is called as nucellus and what is present inside the nucellus i told you, you know large number of cells many cells are present inside the nucellus many many cells are present inside the nucleus now out of many cells few cells converts into megaspore mother cell which is deployed in condition clear this megaspore mother cell which is a deployed in condition undergoes the process called meiosis and produces four megaspore cells out of four megaspore cell only one megaspore cell have capacity to convert into to turn into i say embryo sac what is embryo sac is called as here female gamete or female gametophyte and the study and formation of embryo sac is called as palynology clear i think understood clear remember this flow chart if you remember the flow chart definitely you can write the perfect answer good answer that clear so male gametes we studied female gamete we studied structure of flower we studied and the final topic is how the fertilization take place in the third flower this is the last topic of the lesson clear i'll tell you Next is the fertilization process in the pure flower. Fertilization process. Here, uh, before going to deep into topic, uh, you have to know what is fertilization. You know, pollination. What is pollination? Lower classes we studied. What is pollination? Means we studied. You know. Uh, transfer uh, pollen grain from anther to stigma is called as a pollination. And in that also we studied uh, uh, how many types of pollination are there. Two types of pollinations are there: self pollination, cross pollination. Clear? What is self pollination? If the pollination taking place in the same plant, it is called self pollination. If it is taking place, uh, if, uh, the pollination if it is taking place between the two plants of same species, it is called cross pollination. You know. Clear? So this is a pollination. Now uh, here I'll show you. Okay, in that what is the male gamete first? What the male gamete? We are given the name to it, male gamete, and female gamete. Female gamete. Clear. What the male gamete called as here now? Okay, pollen grain. What the male gamete called as here? Pollen grain. Pg. Okay. What the female gamete called as here? Embryo sac. Female gamete is called as the embryo sac. Clear. Now see the male gamete, pollen grain. This is the pollen grain. Pollen grain will be like this, and this is the pollen tube. This is the pollen tube. Clear. This is the pollen grain. In textbook they have given the diagram. Okay, you can check it properly. Clear. It will be like that. Clear. Then the embryo sac. This is the embryo sac. This is the embryo sac here. Now this uh, pollen tube consists of two cells. Here two cells are present. Clear. One is called as male gamete. Male gamete. Okay. And the second is called as the uh, generative nucleus. Generative nucleus. Clear. Male gamete and generative nucleus. Now the female part. In female here, uh, two synigrets are present. Okay, two synigrets. They are called as synigrets. 
sinigrades and here one egg is present egg clear and uh, one secondary nucleus is present here now okay this is called secondary nucleus secondary nucleus sn secondary nucleus and it also consists of three more cells one two and three they are called as antipodals or the name given to it antipodals antipodals so total number of cells here seven are there in female total number of cells are seven here clear understood in total dadura flower if you see the dadura flower here four total uh, five anthers will be there five male gametes five anthers one stigma will be there clear five anthers will be there here now and one only stigma will be there okay only one stigma here now like that in stigma directly connected to the ovary inside the ovary you can see this one female gamete that is embryo sac okay this embryo sac how many cells are there seven cells are there two sinigrids sinigrids also somebody will tell the sinigrids also what is the sinigrids and one egg is there one secondary nucleus and three antipodal this secondary nucleus is already will have the two set of chromosomes this you have to remember here two set of chromosomes and this is the placenta okay generative nucleus will have one set of chromosome clear now the fertilization process i'll show you okay how the fertilization take place male gamete female gamete now this is the this is the stigma clear this is the stigma during the pollination process uh, what are the agents of pollination you know wind water insects birds these are the agent through which uh, pollen grains can transfer pollen grains are very very light in weight they can easily move easily transfer from one place to other place clear so uh, many large number of pollen grains will be stagnant on stigma many many will be there many many stagnant or you know this stigma will be sticky in structure very sticky in structure the stigma so that it can easily catch the pollen grain so many pollen grains will sit on the stigma but only one pollen grain will get the chance to get inside into the pistil stigma and pistil what is inside at all what is the inside part here now inside is the ovule is there which part is there here ovule is there so this uh, pollen tube this pollen tube this pollen tube along with the two cell it slowly enter into uh, embryo sac and from the ovary it enter into embryo sac and eject two cells and eject two cells you know clear through what it is entering you know through a small pore will be there hole called as micropyle or the arrangement called as here micropyle from there it enters and eject two cells so imagine here it ejected two cells one and two clear one is called as male gamete second is called as secondary nu uh, generative nucleus second one is called as the generative nucleus two cells this pollen tube eject and it will be disappear and disintegrates here the fertilization completed now okay this is the work of pollen tube what is the work of pollen tube you know to supply these two cells inside the embryo cell so many pollen grains are stagnant here you now but one will get the chance here and that one pollen tube enter into the uh, stigma through pistil this is the style of the pistil then enter into the embryo cell okay this is the embryo sac enter into embryo sac okay through micropyle one small openings will be there called as the micropyle then it eject two cells what are two cells one is the male gamete second is the generative nucleus now i'll show you first phase of fertilization second phase of fertilization now clear this cell drop <clears throat> okay during the first phase of fertilization okay what happened during the first phase you know the male gamete okay the male gamete fuses with the egg fuses with the egg see this is the male gamete and this male gamete will go and fuses with the egg clear the male gamete fuses with the egg once it fuses with the egg in lower class itself we study when the male gamete fuses with the female gamete what is formed here zygote is formed okay zygote is formed clear this zygote develops into embryo okay in future the zygote develops into embryo then this embryo in future converts into seeds it converts into seeds okay and when this seeds undergoes the process seedling when it undergoes the process seedling okay then what is produced you know a small baby plant 
And what the baby plant is called as sapling. What the baby plant is called as here, you know? sapling. This is the first phase. This is the first phase of fertilization. Clear? This is the first phase of fertilization. So once again, I tell you, listen carefully. During the first phase of fertilization, what happens here? You know? The male gamete fuses with the egg. Okay. The male gamete fuses with the egg. This male gamete, two cells are there. One male gamete, one generative nucleus. So male gamete will go and fuses with the egg. So when it fuses with the egg here, zygote is produced. Zygote converts into embryo. In embryo develops into seeds. And with the seeds undergoes the process called the seedling and the sapling is produced. This is the first phase. Clear. And then the second phase here. Okay, in the second phase. Second phase of fertilization. In second phase of fertilization here, what is remaining here? Generative nucleus. So just generative nucleus will go and fuses with the secondary nucleus of female. Here secondary nucleus. This generative nucleus will go and fuses with the secondary nucleus. Okay secondary nucleus now generative nucleus uh, is if it contains one set of chromosome clear one set of chromosome and secondary nucleus two set of chromosomes okay already i told you two set of chromosomes so what does it produce here now okay uh, what does it produce here after adding you know it produce endosperm nucleus okay endosperm nucleus okay what is produced you know endosperm nucleus this endosperm nucleus consists of three set of chromosomes. Clear? One plus two, three. Three set of chromosomes. Now here listen carefully. If the endosperm in condition, if endosperm, if endosperm nucleus, if endosperm nucleus is absorbed, okay, absorbed, absorbed by the ovary or absorbed by the embryo sac. Listen carefully. If endosperm nucleus absorbed by the ovary the seeds are formed what is formed here now the seeds seeds are formed seeds are formed okay seeds are formed here clear so that seeds will be very hard in structure they will be hard okay they will be hard in nature clear and what are the example you can tell for the hard uh, here now rice is there okay and jowar is there okay wheat is there etc okay all the seeds will be very tough very hard okay chawal chawal dekhe kitna tough rata it will be tough here now wheat is there jowar is there they will be hard to touch hard very hard seeds are formed here when the hard seeds are formed here when uh, when it is formed you know when endosperm nucleus is absorbed by the embryo sac when the endosperm nucleus absorbed by the ovary or embryo sac here this thing is formed hard seeds are formed suppose in the next condition is that if when the endosperm nucleus is not absorbed if it is not absorbed by the embryo sac ovary then what is formed here then also the seeds are formed then also seeds are formed here also seeds are formed here i write okay here also seeds are formed that but that seeds will be very soft in nature very soft very very soft here now, can you give an example of soft seeds here now? Pea is there, peas are there, beans are there, okay, beans are there, and papaya seeds are there, etc. Okay, these seeds will be very soft in nature, very, very soft in nature. If you press it, it will burst. Clear? Okay, so these are the two conditions here. First phase, second phase of fertilization. Clear? So during the fertilization, a large number of pollen grains transform from anther to stigma. So when they transfer anther to stigma here, okay, anther to stigma here, a large number of pollen grains stagnate on the stigma. But only one can get the chance to get through this style. Okay, pollen tube. What does that pollen tube consist of? Two cells. One is male gamete and second is this uh, generative nucleus. And this pollen tube slowly enters into the embryo sac through a small opening, a small hole that is called micropyle. So once it enters, the pollen tube enters and it ejects two cells. What are the two cells? Male gamete and generative nucleus. And they disappear and disintegrate. The pollen tube will be disappear and disintegrate. Now the fertilization starts. So in the first, 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 first fertilization, what happens? You know, the male gamete fuses with the egg. First phase of fertilization. Male gamete fuses with the egg to produce zygote. Zygote develops into embryo. Okay, embryo converts into seed. And with these seeds, when it undergoes the process, seedling, the sapling is produced. This is the first phase. 
second phase secondary nucleus fuses with the uh, uh, generative nucleus fuses with the secondary nucleus to produce endosperm nucleus secondary nucleus one set of chromosomes two set of chromosomes generative nucleus two set of chromosomes then after adding this what happened what we are getting here now three set of chromosomes okay see here now generative nucleus one set of chromosome secondary nucleus two set of chromosomes when they join here now and what is produced here now endosperm nucleus which contain three set of chromosomes here is a little bit important when endosperm nucleus is absorbed by the embryo sac or ovary then what is what is formed here now seeds are formed how the seeds nature will be hard very hard rice jowa maize etc if the endosperm nucleus is not absorbed by the ovary then also in that condition also the seeds are formed but that seeds will be very soft in nature very soft in condition and all the example papaya seeds are there uh, peas are there beans are there this all things clear so finally what is formed you know final final and final to last final thing you know what is the final thing you know what the fruit we are eating okay the ovary okay the ovary converts into fruit okay fruit and what the ovule here then here ovule converts into seeds clear if you are eating the apple then okay when you are eating the apple the white material is nothing but ovary okay and the seeds which are there they are ovule so ovary converts into okay converts into fruit and ovule converts into seed clear hope everybody have understood here this is the last topic here once again we'll meet very soon but with the physics topic okay thank you this is the dasar of law clear this is the dasar the dasar of law and uh, see this one what we told what the important parts we told here you know, this is the stem the stem main stem is this one here and here where it is attach okay where it is attach one you know, see here it is attach one see it is attached here clear this is the main stem this is called stalk pedicel the first part we told pedicel isn't you know clear the first part what we told pedicel you know then after pedicel what we told you know thalamus we told thalamus is inside we'll see that one also clear let's see this is the pedicel this is the stem this one is the pedicel this one is the pedicel can you see this is the pedicel clear this is the tube a green color tube it is a callus this part is called as the callus now above that see this part you know white color, white color here you know this structure is called as a wall structure first wall clear can you see clearly this is a wall structure clear this one is the wall structure now it is a white in color this is a corolla this part is called as the corolla here this is corolla callus this is the pedicel stem connect to the stem here you know clear i will show you all the parts here you know clear we'll take out this part see this is one is the corolla this is a corolla this is the corolla here clear now this is completely this is a corolla this is a callus this part is the callus sorry this part is the callus this is a corolla this total part is called as the corolla callus and corolla both would have been stagnant on the thalamus thalamus is inside part one part will be there inside that is called as thalamus here i'll show you that part you know corolla callus both are stagnant on thalamus see see the parts here you know? this inside parts are called as the accessory parts of a flower what are they called accessory parts of a flower important parts of a flower in this total how many male parts are there you know i'll, I'll show you it Now see how many total male parts are there? You know, okay, five male parts. These are the anthers. Clear? Check it clearly. Here. And here, fine dust-like structure will be there. Dust, just dust like that. Can you see this one? Dust, dust. This yellow color dust. Okay. This is nothing but the pollen grains. 
they call as pollen grains this part this part is called as the anther these are all the anthers five anthers will be there and this part this below part is called as the filament together called as the androsium okay anther filament down here it is called stamen or androsium total part is called as the androsium and this complete parts are enclosed by corolla and calyx corolla and calyx so these are the five parts and this one is the female part this is the female part can you see clearly this is the female part this is the female part clear see this one the first part is called as the stigma this first part is called as the this one this one this is the stigma it is a sticky in nature okay very sticky in nature so that it can easily hold the pollen grains when pollen grain transfer from anther to stigma called pollination i think you know this one what is pollination is so that number of pollen grains will be stagnant here a number of on the stigma then the pollination starts then the fertilization starts here anyhow this is the stigma stigma this tube is called the style or pistil okay this pistil or style are made up of number of carpels carpels are the cells clear and this one is the ovary the last one this one is the ovary last part can you see here this is the ovary this one is called as the ovary clear ovary inside the ovary ovule will be there clear so in the number of parts are there then i'll tell you but this is the part this is in female part the stigma are directly connected to the ovary clear this is the female part this is the ovary this one is the this one is the ovary clear This is the ovary. Inside the ovary, ovule will be there, and number of other parts also are there. So these are the parts of the dura flower. Hope everybody have understood, and I can show the seeds also. This is the seed of the dura flower. Clear? This is the seed of the dura flower. Clear? Inside seeds will be there. It will be very sharp here. Don't touch like that. It's a very sharp. I'll show you. 